Hey guys, are you ready to get epic? <laughs> All right, my friends. So for this lesson, we are going, I mean, it's gonna be epic. So what we're doing, we are gonna talk about the Old Testament and big things happen in the Old Testament. So let's, let's, just, let's just jump right on in. Now, the Old Testament, is the front half of the Bible, but it's more than just the front half of the Bible. It is the time before Jesus, okay? So before Jesus came and did all of these things, but we're gonna start talking about some things that happened before Jesus. And so things weren't always the same. Like God was still there, God still loved us, but things weren't always the same because Jesus came and made a lot of changes, good changes, but a lot of changes. So we're gonna read from Exodus, and I still haven't bought myself a children's international, international children's Bible, so I'm going to read from that, just because I feel like it makes things a little easier. Now, our big idea this week is I can spend time with God anywhere. So anywhere you are, you can always talk to God anytime. But it wasn't always that easy, because we learned last month about how Jesus um, left and God sent us the Holy Spirit. So now we have the Holy Spirit and he's with us always. Like before we could, you know, talk to God and pray to God. But before Jesus came, there had to be like priests and sacrifices and all of these things. The Holy Spirit wasn't with us always. Jesus had to, you know, come in and like start fresh and so we could have these things okay so we're talking way back then before Jesus before the Holy Spirit was with everybody I mean he was still around he just wasn't you know here on the earth like it is now today so we're going back 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 into Exodus chapter 35 and this is when Moses and the Israelites are out in the desert because they have escaped Egypt and they're wandering around and this is like a, a, a trip that should have taken like, I don't know, a few months, less than a year, and they're out there for 40 years because they had a lot of work to do in their hearts. But this is the story of a tabernacle. Let's see if we can figure out what a tabernacle is, all right? So the Israelites, because they had a lot of work to do in their hearts, they sometimes forgot that God was always with them. So God told them what to do. So we're going to read from Exodus chapter 35, verses 4 to 35, which is the end of the chapter. And it's kind of long, so I'm going to try to make sure that makes sense. Okay. Moses said to the Israelites, this is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Let everyone who is willing bring this offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, and bronze blue, purple, and red thread, fine linen, goat hair, male sheepskins that have been dyed red, and they may bring fine leather and acacia wood, which is a specific kind of wood like oak or pine or whatever, but this is acacia wood. And they may also bring olive oil for the lamps, spices for the special olive oil used for appointing priests and for the sweet smelling incense, and they may bring onyx stones and other jewels to be put on holy vests and chest coverings of the priests. Are you getting what they're building yet? Do you know what a tabernacle is? They're building a place to worship God. Now remember, this was back before Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So they had to have special places so God could meet them. And it kind of helped them be closer to God. Okay? So they're out in the desert, there's no buildings, so there's definitely not any tabernacles or churches or synagogues or any type of things. So they had to build it. And so all they had was what they could carry. Because that's what Pharaoh said when they left Egypt. They could take what they could carry. So now they're having to do some work. It says, in chapter, verse 10, Let all the skilled workers come and make everything the Lord commanded. Now this is how good God is. He's telling them how to do all of these things. Because in Egypt, yeah, they worked a lot, but I doubt they ever had built a tabernacle. So let's see. The holy tent was a tabernacle. Its outer tent and its covering, the hooks, the frames, the crossbars, the posts, the bases, 
the Ark of the Covenant, its poles, its lids, the curtains of the, for the front of it, the tables and the poles, and all the things that go with the table and the bread that shows that we are in God's presence. These are all the things that they have to build. The lampstand for the light and all the things that go with it. The lamps and the olive oil for the light. The altar for the, of incense and its poles. The special oil and the sweet-smelling incense. The curtain of the entrance for the meeting tent. The altar of burnt offering and its bronze screen. Its poles and all the tools. The bronze bowl and its base. The curtain around the courtyard. Hmm. There are posts and bases. The curtain at the entry of the courtyard. The pegs. And the pegs, the pegs of the holy tent and all of the courtyard and all of the ropes, the special clothes that the priests will wear in the holy place. And these are the holy clothes for Aaron, the priest, and his sons to wear as they serve as priests. All right, so that was a long list. That was 10 verses of things that they have to build. So they can't just build a tent. They have to have sticks for the tent. They can't just build a table. They have to make sure that it's made the right way. Because remember, back then we didn't have Jesus yet. We didn't have the Holy Spirit yet. In order to talk to God, they had to have things just right. Back then they had to do sacrifices. They had to do lots of, lots of specific things to talk to God. Okay? But here's how good God is. These people never probably built these things before. So all of the people went away from Moses. Everyone who wanted to give came and brought a gift to the Lord. These gifts were used for making the meeting tent, the tabernacle. All of the things in the tent and the special clothes. All of the men and women who wanted to give brought gold jewelry of all kinds. They brought pins, earrings, rings, and bracelets. They presented their gold to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, and red thread and fine linen came and gave it to the Lord. Anyone who had goat hair or male sheepskins, colored red or fine leather, brought them to the Lord. Everyone who could give silver or bronze brought what was a gift to the Lord. Everyone who had acacia wood to be used in the work brought it. Every, okay, so that's all of the things. So these people, they knew that they didn't know how to build a tabernacle, but they knew that God would show them. So they gave what they could. They gave what they could. They gave what they had. God wasn't asking them to go find like, I don't know, a dozen purple rocks each or something. They had to go out into the wilderness and find it. No, he was asking you to give what you already have, okay? So they brought all these things. And so every woman who could sew used her hands to make the blue, purple, and red thread and fine linen. And then they brought what they'd made. So they're like, okay, ladies, you got all of this thread and linen. Who is like really good at sewing? And they raised their hands and they went off and they started working. Okay, all of the women who were skilled and wanted to help make thread of the goat hair and they went to start making the curtains for the tent. The leaders brought onyx and other jewels, and the stones and jewels were put on the holy vest and chest coverings for the priests. They also brought spices and olive oils, and these were used in sweet-smelling incense and the special oil and the oil to burn the lamps. All the men and women of Israel who wanted to help brought gifts to the Lord. They were used for all the work the Lord had commanded. Moses and the people do. All right. So all of the people are now working together. They've got all their wood. They've, the women have made the cloth. They have to build everything. And you, we read it over here. They had to make the altar and poles. They had to make pegs. They had to make a screen for you know, the burnt offering because they couldn't have everything like be burning down. They had to make all different types of curtains. They made all of these things. They had to do it all themselves with their own hands. Okay. So, and everybody worked together. If you knew how to do something, then, you know, you got a job. Then Moses said to the people, look, the Lord has chosen, Bez I don't know how to say this guy's name. Let's figure it out. Bezalel. Bezalel. I don't know. Anyways, he's the son of Uri and the son of Hur from the tribe of Judah. The Lord has filled him with the spirit of God. And the Lord has given him the skill and ability and knowledge to do all kinds of work. He was able to design the pieces to be made of gold, silver, and bronze. He was able to cut stones and jewels and put them in metal. Bezazel, bez, bez, bezalel, bezalel, maybe that's it. Bezalel carved wood and did all kinds of work. The Lord has given Bezalel and, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Holiab, I like that one. 
Oholiab, the ability to teach others. Oholiab is the son of, why, why? Asimach from the tribe of Dan, okay? The Lord has given them skill to do all kinds of work, and they are able to cut designs in metal and stone. They can plan and sew in the designs in the fine linen with blue and purple and red thread, and they are also able to weave things. All right, so let's see if they have these people's names in the different version. Like, it's, like you know, pronounced out, spelled out how they do it. No, no helps from any of the versions. Okay, so. Let's summarize. So they were in the wilderness. They needed a, to a place where they could talk to God and God could talk to them. They didn't have a place. They didn't have anything. So God used what they did have. God showed them how to use what they did have. And then if there wasn't anybody to do a certain amount of work, he gave the ability to these people. To Bezalel and uh, Oholiab. I have no idea if that's how you say their names. It was a long time ago, so I'm sure they'll forgive me. All right, so they didn't, I don't, it doesn't say that they, that was their jobs before. It said that God gave them these abilities to do what he wanted them to do. All right, so over here it tells us a little bit more about, a little, a little more specifically what happened, all right? So God said to make curtains of fine twisted linens and yarns, and to weave on them pictures of winged angels to make the walls. So, and they had the purple and the blue and the red. They had gold clasps, that's why I like Bezalio was like important because he had, they was he had to learn how to make these things. So they had to make out of gold, like hooks to hold the curtains together. The ladies had to put pictures of winged angels on the curtains and join them together to make the walls. Then they had to make a tent around these fancy curtains. So there was like, that was like the inside where God would come. But then around with the goat hair. And so like wool or, you know, have you ever seen like a dog get rained on and um, the water kind of stays on top of their fur? Goat hair and sh like wool and like sheep, you know wool <laughs> you know the water kind of beads off of them so that's why they use goat hair so they made the fancy curtains with the little gold clasp and then they made the goat hair curtains that would like keep the water off make frames from the acacia wood and silver bases so there's you know protected the acacia wood assemble all the tabernacle exactly as i've told you at every place that you stop and take a rest and so God's people built the tabernacle exactly as they were told. And each time they stopped traveling, they had to set down and set up the tabernacle. During their journey in the wilderness, as a way to remind them that God was with them always. So that's a lot of work. They had to build a church from scratch. And this wasn't just like, here's a tent, good luck. This was fancy. They had all of these things for God and uh, the Ark of the Covenant, which is kind of like where um, God's word kind of stays. You know, like, oh, uh, it's like very important. That's what they put uh, the Ten Commandments and all of these things. So, the scrolls. There we go, the scrolls. That's where they put the scrolls of God's word and the Ark of the Covenant. And they had to do all of these things. But God used what they had. And if they didn't have what they need, God made sure that they had it. Luckily, my friends, we don't need to do all of these things. We don't have to build a tabernacle every single time we need to talk to God. Because as we learned last week, God gave us the Holy Spirit. And God is with us always. We learned that the Holy Spirit is our advocate our intercessor. So even when we feel like we don't have the right things to say for God, if we say, Holy Spirit, help me, he's going to make sure that God knows what we need. God is bigger than all of the things than we need, so he can help us. Now, my friends, God will always be with you. It says in James 8, 
four, or oh my gosh, James 4, verse 8. The first part of the verse. Come near to God, and God will come near to you. So that's all you have to do. You don't have to build a whole tabernacle. Could you imagine every time you needed to talk to God, you had to either go to a building or had to build your own building to talk to God? No. We don't have to do that now. Jesus came. Jesus left, but he sent us the Holy Spirit so that we can talk to God whenever we need. And that is why, what was our thing? I can spend time with God anywhere. Anywhere. So anytime that you feel sad or lonely or lost or frustrated or mad or whatever, you can just take a minute right there and spend some time with God. You can do it before bed when you're brushing your teeth. You can spend some time with God in the car. You can spend some time with God at the grocery store if you go there these days. You can spend time with God out in your front yard laying in the grass. You can spend time with God on your couch or at your kitchen table. You can spend God, time with your God, with God when you're at school, whenever we get to go back. You can spend time with God at the park or on an airplane or on a train or, you know, here, there, anywhere. We get to spend time with God. And when we try to spend time with God, then he can make a big difference in our lives. All right. And that is why... This is our Bible verse, our memory verse for this month. It says, be sure to fear the Lord and to serve him faithfully with all of your heart. Now, where it says fear here, it doesn't mean like to be scared of. Like, think of some rules that your mom has and you know they're good rules or your dad or whoever. And they have good rules. And somebody says, let's go do something that's against the rules. And you say, oh, no, I can't do that. You're not really afraid of your mom, but you respect her. You respect that these rules are here to keep you safe. So God has rules for us like pray and make disciples and, you know, be kind and to do good things. So be sure to do what God told you to do. So be sure to listen to the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. First Samuel 12, 24. First Samuel 12, 24. One more time. First Samuel 12, 24. Be sure to fear the Lord and to serve him faithfully with all your heart. And not fear. It means like respect and listen to. Be, be sure to respect and listen to the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. And you can do that all the time because I can spend time with God anywhere. We don't have to build a whole tabernacle and even if we do have to do a job that's really big and seems just way too hard God always makes sure that we have what we need just like he made sure the Israelites had what they need he used what they have and if they needed something that they didn't have he made sure he gave them the ability to do that God will take care of us no matter what he never asks more of us than what we can do Sometimes it's tricky. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we'll feel a little stretched, but that's because we're growing because God wants us to be the best that we can be. All right, my friends. That is it for today. A little short and sweet. So I hope that you have a great week. I hope that I see somebody on Sunday. I've missed you guys. Um, I understand if you don't come because, you know, germs and things that are going on but if i do see you i might not be able to give you a hug but i'll be happy to see your face all right guys let's do a prayer dear god thank you so much for being with us always for sending your son jesus for us and sending your holy spirit to be with us so that we can talk to you and be with you no matter where we are god you are so big and you're so great you're bigger than all the scary things out in the world today we know that you have a plan for us and a job for us. And God, help us to do that job to the best of our abilities and to remember to ask you for help whenever we need it because you are always here with us. God, help us to make good choices and live our lives the way you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
All right, my friends, that's it. I'll see you later for some more epic stories. Bye.